Hi, this is Rich Neapolitan. Today I will be talking about decision analysis. In previous talks, I introduced Bayesian networks. Uh, one example was the, the Bayesian network concerning lung cancer and bronchitis and manifestations of those diseases and, ca and one cause. And I noted that we could use that Bayesian network to perform diagnosis. We could determine the probability of these diseases conditional on the evidence. Once we had that probability, we could make a decision then. The clinician could make a decision and along with the patient as to how to best proceed. But the, the Bayesian network itself did not explicitly recommend a decision. It just provided information that the patient and the, cl the clinician could then use to make a decision. Decision analysis builds on this that it, once the Bayesian network uh, uh, informs us of the probability of events, we then, it then explicitly makes a decision based upon the patient's preferences. Um, decision analysis doesn't only apply to medicine, in fact, more, more often it applies to financial making decisions. So I'll describe it in a more general way. Decision analysis. In decision analysis, we make a decision in the face of uncertainty. Should I buy the stock NASDAQ? Try and decide what to do with your money. Should you leave in the bank or should you buy a stock? Investors make that kind of decision every day. Should I sell my house? You, you, you want to move to another neighborhood or to another city, but the, the housing market might not be the best. What is best? Should I rent my house? Should I sell it? What should I do? Should I have heart bypass surgery? It was recommended to you by your, your uh, surgeon. But there are certainly risks involved. It's, it's the patient's final decision of whether to have it or not. Perhaps the patient can be helped with that decision by a decision analysis program. And the decision we make is one that maximizes expected utility. And the utility has to be in terms of what the decision maker prefers. Here's the, um, um, the most basic decision analysis, and we use decision trees to model these kinds of decisions. This is not to be confused with the decision trees that we talked about when I introduced knowledge-based systems. Uh, they're two separate structures. They just have the same name, decision trees. In this kind of decision tree, we have a node called the decision node, which we represent with a rectangle. And then the arrows out of it show the directions that can be made depending on what decision you make. And in the NASDAQ decision, you either buy the stock or we're assuming you have $1,000 to invest or you leave it in the bank. Then you proceed to the right and you see the outcomes that happen if you made this decision. In, in these kinds of financial decisions, there's always a time frame. All right? In this example, we're looking perhaps one year into the future and interest rates are 5%. And we're assuming that the bank is, is a completely safe investment. So there's no uncertainty. If you leave the $1,000 in the bank, you will have $1,005 in one year. If you buy NASDAQ, there's an uncertainty involved with what will happen. These are the probabilities associated with what you feel will happen. Again, the, this is where the Bayesian approach to probability comes in. These are your belief based upon your analysis of the situation. You ascertain that there's a 25% chance NASDAQ will be at $5. Now it's at currently at 10. There's a 25% chance it'll stay at $10. And the 50% chance will go up to $20. Now obviously you don't believe these are the only um, things that can happen. But whenever you make a decision, you, you break down your alternatives into a number that is manageable based upon your beliefs. They're enough so that you can it will be enough to model your decision and recommend the decision which would maximize your expected utility. All right, if NASDAQ is still at $10, which it is now, you will have $1,000 in a year. If it goes down to $5, you'll have $500. If it goes up to $20, you'll have $2,000, which obviously is what you hope. The expected value of this node then is 0 0.25 times 5 plus 0 0.25 times 10 plus 0.5 times 20. 
which comes out to be $1,375. So the decision that is made is to buy NASDAQ because this has a higher expected value than this. Now, I'm not going to be talking much about, about financial decision making in, in this talk because we're, we're more interested in medical applications. But I just want to say that this, this is all talked about in the contemporary artificial intelligence text. We make the decision based upon the user's preference. All right. And there's ways to do that. You assign a utility to outcomes such that has a declining value. As money increases, your, your utility follows something resembling a, a logarithmic function. All right. So in other words, if somebody has is very risk averse, they may not make this decision because they may not want to take that 25% chance of losing $500. And that can all be modeled in the decision making process. You, you have utilities of money here rather than actual values. And you can read about that in the contemporary artificial intelligence text. I talk about it more in my text, Probabilistic Method for Financial and Marketing Informatics. Uh, here's something from the medical domain. Should I treat my streptococcal infection? All right, you either treat it or you don't treat it. If you don't treat it, we treat that as a certain outcome. You will have a sore throat for four days, and you have this much expected quality adjusted life left. I'll come back to what we mean by quality adjusted life in a minute, but if you do treat it, there's uncertainty. Uh, the treatment has a very small chance of, called an, of causing anaphylaxis death. Uh, in this case, it's 0. 0.00003. Well, if you have anaphylaxis death, then you end up dead. Uh, so then you have zero years left. If you don't die, the treatment is expected to have leave you with only three sore throat days. So you're better off. And that's why this number is slightly more than this one. These are quality adjusted life years. They're based upon not only how much, how long you expect to live, but the quality of life in that remaining time. And so one, you have one less sore throat day, so your quality of life will be greater on that one day. They're close because it only concerns one day. Um, you can read page 214 of the Contemporary Artificial Intelligence text and it will tell you how to compute these quality adjusted life years. Sometimes people um, take exception to this. If, if, if the treatment could cause me to die, I certainly wouldn't do it. But that's not really true. Um, if you think about it, we ignore events that have very small probability, like they can't happen all the time. When you get in your car and and drive to work, there's a very small probability you get in an accident. When you take an airplane, there's a very small probability the plane will crash. So you do make decisions to do things which are more likely to make you die than if you didn't do them. So this is just formally modeling uh, something we do do all the time. All right, that was a decision tree. The modern way to handle decision analysis to use an influence diagram in which brings us back to Bayesian networks. An influence diagram is really a Bayesian network augmented with decision nodes and a value node. It can represent all the same decisions as a decision tree. It represents those decisions more succinctly and more naturally. We have algorithms that solve influence diagrams once you create them. And just like backward chaining, can, can create the, the other kind of decision tree on the fly. These algorithms essentially can create a decision tree on the fly and solve it. Now they are described in, in various texts. Uh, the algorithms are not really described in contemporary artificial intelligence. They're described in my text, Learning Bayesian Networks, and in other places. We're going to just assume that you have those algorithms available to you and are, are able to use them so we're, I'm only going to talk about modeling problems with influence diagrams. Here's the problem, should I buy NASDAQ or leave my money in the bank? The influence diagram representation looks like this. You have your uncertain nodes. There's only one, NASDAQ. You have the probability of its outcomes. This looks just like a one-node Bayesian network. Then you have your decision nodes, 
and you have the two values it can have. They're represented with a rectangle. And it does not look like a Bayesian network. Bayesian networks don't have decision nodes. They only have uncertain nodes. And you have a utility node, which is the utility of the final outcome to the user, to the person we're modeling. And the other the edges into this nodes are, are, the, are the variables that affect the utility. Let's look at these. This is the decision to, to buy. If you buy NASDAQ and it goes down to $5, your final utility will be $500. If you buy NASDAQ and it's with $10, your final utility will be $1,000. If you buy NASDAQ and it goes up to $20, your final decision will be $2,000. If you don't buy it, this N here means that it doesn't matter what these three values are. You don't have to actually explicitly write them down here. Uh, depending upon the program you're using, you may need to do this. But for the purpose of a diagram, we don't because no matter what this value is, it's $105. It doesn't matter what the stock market does if you don't buy NASDAQ because you're going to have $1,005. This completely models the problem. You don't see immediately how to compute the expected utility by looking at the model as you do with the decision tree, but the algorithm does this for you once you model the problem like that. Here's a much more complex um, influence diagram, and even this one is not particularly complex compared to how complex they can become. But I did not even model it with the decision tree because it is fairly complex. It involves it involves a decision of whether to buy a particular car, which you later want to sell. And it's described in more detail in the Contemporary Artificial Intelligence test, text. All right, there's a question about the transmission. That's probably the transmission is good, which is 0.8. Probably the transmission is bad is 0.2. Now there's a test available to test the transmission. And it has a true positive and a false positive rate, just like we've talked about before for the HIV test. If the transmission is good, there's a 30% chance the test will be positive. If the transmission is bad, there's a 30% and 90% chance. If it's bad, there's a much greater chance that the test will be positive. You have two decisions to make. Uh, first one is, should I run the test? Because the test costs $200, so it would cost you some money. Should I just buy the spiffy car without running the test? Or should I simply not buy it? The assumption is you can buy it for a certain amount and you can sell it for a certain amount. All right. um, once you make that decision, you have a second decision because depending if you run the test, you'll know the value of this node, the test result, when you make this decision. So if you run the test, you'll have a second decision, which is should I buy the spiffy car or should I not buy it? All right, so there's a second decision. These are, and all three of these nodes rep, uh, affect the utility. Notice the test result does not. Whether the transmission is good or not affects the utility, but not the actual result of the test. Let's look at these utilities. If you, let's look at not running the test. If you don't run, if, if you simply buy the spiffy car, You'll never make the next decision. That's why that is a D. So if you buy this spiffy car, you'll never make this decision. And if the transmission is good, that's the best thing that can happen. You have $11,000. So you won't have spent money on the test. And $11,000 is what we assume that the car is worth. All right, if it's, in, if it's in good shape. If you do the same thing here, but the transmission is bad, you will only have $8,000 if you buy the spiffy car, because that's how much we assume the spiffy car is worth if it has a bad transmission. If you don't buy the spiffy car, again, you never make the second decision because you've decided here's the way not to buy it. It doesn't matter whether the transmission is good or bad, you'll have $10,000. This is the amount of money you started with. This is the amount of money you can buy the spiffy car for. So if you do nothing, you'll have $10,000. If you buy the spiffy car and it's good, you'll have 11, because that's how much it'll be worth. If you buy it and it's bad, you'll have eight. Now let's look at the decision to run the test. These outcomes are exactly like these, all right, except they're all $200 less, because the test costs you $200. 
So if, if you buy the car and, and it turns out to be good, you'll have $10,800. If you buy and it turns out to be bad, you'll have $78,000. If, if you do nothing, finally, no, you've noticed you've already run the test and then you decided not to buy it, you only have $9,800 because you have spent money on the test. All right, I'm going to come back and with Netica in the next talk and look at this problem again and, and actually make some of these decisions so we can look at it uh, more clearly and in, 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 the, in the process of actually solving it. This is a very complex example in the, in the medical domain. Sam has a non-small cell carcinoma of the lung. The preferred treatment in this situation is a thoracotomy. The alternative treatment is radiation. But we don't know if mediastinal metastasis is present. If it is present, a thoracotomy would be contraindicated because it subjects the patient to a risk of death with no health benefit. If mediastinal metastases are absent, then it offers a, a, a substantial survival advantage, as long as the tumor is not metastasized. We have two tests available for involving the involvement of the mediastinum. There are the CAT scan and the mediastin, I can't even say this word, mediastinoscopy. All right. So we see it's a complex problem, decision analysis in the medical domain. The problem involves three decisions, actually. First of all, you've got the CAT scan available. Should you undergo it? Second, given this decision and the results of the CAT scan, should you have the medi medianos I can't say <laughs> mediastinoscopy. Third, given these decisions and any test results, should the patient then have the thoracotomy? Here actually is, is the influence diagram representing this problem. Like I said, it, it's pretty complex. All right. It, it, there's three decisions. The first one is simply whether or not to have the CAT scan. Depending upon this decision is, well, if you have the CAT scan, as those the CAT scan results, it can be, it can be positive if, 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 if the test comes back positive, it, or, and it can be also the result can be positive. If they're, if, I mean, they can be positive if the, if the condition is present, but can also be positive if the condition is absent. Um, if you don't run it, then the, this probably of not running it is one. All right. Now there's the decision about do, doing this test, which I'm not going to try, <laughs> try to say again. All right. This test can cause death. So there's a small chance of it causing death. If you don't do the test, obviously it can't make you die. If the next decision, if you make this one, is whether to do the thoracotomy, which can also cause death, right? If you run this test, it will have a result, and you'll know that result when you make this decision, all right? Just like you'll know this result when you make that decision, all right? Finally, there's the utility of the outcomes, and the utility depends upon uh, whether you, you, you um, well, let's look at the decisions whether you die, all right? If you die, the utility is zero. So if, if either of these variables, if this one, this is the value of, of this variable, if it is die or the value of this one is die, all right, then the value is zero, all right? Now let's look at this one. You, you've decided to have the thoracotomy and The B, I can't say the word. The, 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 the mediastinal metastases are present. Now you've lived in these two. You'll have 1.8 years of expected quality adjusted life years. If you do not have the test, you still have the same value. Remember, the thoracotomy is only a value if they are if mediastinal metastases are absent, and that's the situation modeled here. If they are absent, and you have the thoracotomy. You can expect to have this many equality adjusted life years, and if they're absent, you can expect to have this much. So the difference is whether they're absent or present, and that's why utility depends upon all four variables. 
All right, again, I'm also going to look at this problem in more detail uh, in the next class with actually looking at influence diagrams. All right, in fact, that's what I'm saying here. Next, I will show some influence diagrams using Netica, but I'm going to hold that off for the next series of talks. I think this introduction is probably the next talk. I think this, this introduction is enough for today.